It's a top of the table clash. One minute of injury time. It's all over. We win the game against Chelsea. That's a goal. Yep, they equalise straight away. A possibility for Xerdan Shakiri to move to Selhurst Park. Three years, crucial first team player. Hey guys and welcome back to the Crystal Palace career mode. We are in the January transfer window and some big moves are about to happen in today's episode. But before we get into that, we need to answer a few questions, mostly regarding transfers. It is said Ross Barkley has said he wants to join Crystal Palace in the near future. Are you going to enter talks with Everton about Barkley? To be honest, I don't think so. I've already shown you my transfer targets for the creative midfield role, the number 10 role. Ross Barkley is a pure number 10, but it looks like we're going in for someone else. And the moment I sign that certain player, I won't have any more needs for another number 10, so Ross Barkley is definitely not on my radar. The next three questions you can read yourself, but basically they ask the same thing. Am I going to replace Steve Mandanda now that he's left for Real Madrid? And honestly, although there is a position vacant for the backup or first team goalkeeper role, I don't think I will sign someone unless I've really got the funds. There are talks of Joe Hart, for example, who's out of favour with Manchester City, but or Sirigu, who's out of favour with PSG, but I don't think I need it. Alex McCarthy has played six games this season, kept five clean sheets. He's honestly underrated. I think Alex McCarthy deserves a chance, and I'm not going to waste money on the position that I think we're already strong enough in. That being said, once I've completed the signings I need to complete and there's still some money left, who knows who we could sign, I haven't decided that yet, but the main priority first is the striker and the new cam. Let's take a look at who those two players could be that we sign right now, Benteke and someone else, who have you guys voted for? Let's head into the action and complete some signings. Here we are, the press conference is over, so it's finally time to head into the action and make some proper signings. Benteke, well, Liverpool has accepted the Benteke transfer offer. I've put in a 22 million bid for Xerdan Shakir, who's worth 18 and a half, but he's in bad form. So hopefully that's an offer that could do well. Let's take a look at what kind of news we have. A final scout report on Remy Cabela. Not interested, you guys have voted. It is Xerdan Shakir who we're going for, so uh, definitely not going to go for Cabela if we get uh, Shakiri in. Bolasian is involved with the Benteke deal, so I'm only going to let him go for 15 million. I ideally don't want to sell him right now, and I want to swap him for Benteke. We've got two days left before we have to play the Middlesbrough game, and it looks like we're going to have to play that before we can wrap up some transfer action. 22 million, though, accepted by Stoke City. This is great news. 70 grand a week. That's not expen That's not too expensive. I'd say that's pretty cheap for a player of his calibre. We are literally one step away from signing Christian Benteke and Serdan Shakira, but in the game against Middlesbrough at Molten Road, we have to do it without them. And honestly, I think Middlesbrough are a decent enough side in Premier League this season, but they are new. We should be able to take them. Although it's away from home, I'm expecting this team to be able to do the job. Uh, Alex McCarthy playing in net for the first time in the league this season. I've seen good things from him before, hopefully he can repeat that with a clean sheet. Usually this is one of those games that you would sim halfway through the season when you're doing transfers and stuff, but we are so close with Chelsea, we're both on 44 points, that I don't want to risk it. Middlesbrough have a decent side, Victor Fisher, Victor Valdez, uh, Negredo, new signings this season for them, they're actually quite a solid side. This is our side, you've already seen it. James Tompkins playing ahead of Scott Dan. Again, rotating a few positions around Sissoko in central midfield. This is a strong enough side, I know it is. Zaha looking for Bakari Sacco, who needs to run towards the ball, and he finally has done. Bakari Sacco puts his body in between the ball and the man. He's been, foul been fouled, and it's a red card! He's off! Richie Delat has been sent off 90 minutes into the game. This could be huge. I didn't think it was a red card offence. We'll have to take a look at that. He definitely wasn't last man. Sako puts his body in between the man and the ball. I, f I feel like it's a harsh de decision from the ref, but he has given it. Oh, that's a great ball through. Clayton is through on goal here. McCarthy makes a good save. That's the Sako. Pulling it back to Pape Suare. Suare into Andros Townsend. Andros Townsend turns and shoots on his left foot and he scores just before the end of the first half. Andros Townsend, that is his third goal in three consecutive games. He's been absolutely on fire, and honestly, I, I can't wait to see him link up with the likes of Ben Teke and Serdan Shakiri because now he's the man who's getting us the goals, but he shouldn't be. He should be the creator. Brilliant finish past Victor Valdez. It's 1-0 against 10 men. It looks like we're heading towards a victory. Maybe it's a bit too soon to say we're probably going to win this game, but like I said, against 10 men, completely dominant. McCarthy pulled off a good save. I know he's a good keeper, he may not be as high rated as Steve Mandanda, but he's a lot taller, he's 6'4", which is the perfect height for a goalkeeper in FIFA, 6'4", 6'5", 
around that height. But as you can see, we're having the better of the chances in that first half. In the second half, we need to go all out and try and get that second goal. Counter attack possibilities with Musa Sissoko running forward. And now into Andros Townsend against Damien Delaney, former uh, Palace player. He does well, Townsend. He's still going. Andros Townsend. But on his left, Valdez. Musa Sissoko into Johan Kabai. Well played. Johan Kabai now into Andros Townsend. Townsend loses it. Kabai picks it up again. Musa Sissoko from range on his right foot. It's just over. Well played. The run is made by Jason Punch and space for Crystal Palace to do something inside. It's Musa Sissoko. He lays that off one more. It is Townsend. I didn't do that well enough. I completely ruined that chance. Although Jason Punchin is still on it, he loses it. Joe Ward holding onto the ball into Johan Kabai. Kabai looking for uh, Bakari Sako, who turns on his left foot and Valdez saves again. Good turn by Andros Townsend. Through to Wilfried Zaha. There is space. They've pushing up. They've pushed up so many numbers. We have to capitalize on this. Townsend, one more. It's brilliant play. Sissoko just can't find the back of the net again. We are going to get punished for not finding that second goal. It looks like, no, the game ends 1-0. Fair enough. We had chances. And this is why we need reinforcements up top. I keep repeating myself, but it's so vital to get that new striker. Bakari Sako isn't really a striker. We need to do cam. We've created enough chances, but putting them in the back of the net has been a struggle. Nine shots, six on target. You should be getting two or three goals out of that at least. Man of the match performances from Musa Sissoko, who was very solid. McCarthy, who didn't let in anything. And Andros Townsend as well, who scored the goal. And even though Townsend is the obvious choice, I was debating between Johan Kabai and Pape Suare. Kabai completed 14 out of 14 passes. That is absolutely incredible. 4 out of 4 dribbles, solid. 3 out of 4 tackles, the most out of the entire team. But Pape Suare was flawless at the back and assisted the Townsend goal. Pape Suare gets man of the match. And we finally have the full scout report on Serdan Shakiri, and it's only telling us what we already knew. Physically fantastic. That ballad, sprint speed, acceleration, agility combined is incredible. Dead ball specialist with free kicks, corners, long shots, dribbling. He can do it all. Serdan Shakiri is the man we're going for. But the first signing of this window is Christian Benteke. And it's a huge one. This is probably the most important one that that was the only position we were really missing a solid striker Conor Wickham has done a good job but he wasn't solid enough to keep going at that level yeah, Yannick Balassi he's gone he's gone mate Benteke has joined Crystal Palace and will be wearing the number 17 let's see how he does in his first game of the season it's fantastic to welcome you Christian you have joined this club in real life as well so it makes it absolutely perfect and the next signing has accepted a day after it's Jerdan Shakiri for 22 million brilliant signing again and we've still got some money left this is going to surprise you guys but with the money we have left I have scattered around the Premier League looking for a center back I'm not going for a new goalkeeper the one position I'm kind of unsure of is that center back slot we've been rotating Scott Dan and James Tompkins around I still haven't figured out who I like more out of the two so why not go for a center back who currently isn't having a great season but we know is very, very solid, both in real life and on the game. Physically, he's a monster on this game, but he's in bad form, so we could be able to pick him up for cheap. And it's tempting to involve either James Tompkins or Scott Dan in this deal. I know this is probably a weird one. I was contemplating giving James Tompkins back to West Ham because that's where he came from. It's a little bit weird buying two West Ham centre-backs in the space of six months, but who cares? I need another good solid centre-back to partner with Ashley Williams. Scott Dan plus 6 million for Winston Reid would be an absolute bargain. It's too good of an opportunity to just let it slip. 6 million plus Scott Dan wasn't enough. I bumped it up to 9 million plus Scott Dan and they have accepted that, which is fantastic. He could become a world-class centre-back at our club. I just want to sign him up straight away. Yes, automatically adjust the budget. 100 grand a week is a lot. But I, I've got a feeling he's going to be worth it. And there we go. Out of nowhere, out of the blue, we've just signed Winston Reid, who is quality. We all know it is. We've strengthened every area of our, our, our game, basically. We've signed a new striker, a new creative midfielder, and a solid defender on top of that. And this is probably where I'm going to stop doing transfers and skip past transfer deadline day. We have brought in a total of three players combined worth of 49 million euros which is incredible we've lost out on a couple of good players i'd say mandanda was really good but sometimes inconsistent 
Berahino never really hit the ground running, Bolassi was underwhelming, and Scott Dan never convinced me. It was either between him or James Tompkins. So I think those three players on the left are massive upgrades to those of, that we have lost, basically. I want to hear your guys' opinion on how we did this transfer window. Let me know. A rating out of 10 down below. How good was this transfer window for Crystal Palace? Rated out of 10. I'm curious to see what you guys think, but personally, I feel like we've had a really good window. This team just looks incredibly strong. We're going to play one more game and then I'm going to cut the episode. But Christian Benteke, 6 foot 3, an absolute giant strength power header, a physically a monster. He's not the slowest either, you know. He's got decent pace, agility, sprint speed, all of that, which is good. Jumping and strength, of, of course, being his main attributes. Finishing, heading, shot power. Decent enough long shots and dribbling as well, ball control. It's all there. He feels like the complete striker, so I'm looking forward to using him. Sherdan Shakiri. some of you were questioning whether he could play in the cam role. You can see it right there. It's his second position, center attack in midfield. Four star, four star is brilliant. Flair, long shot, trait taker. Physically, again, a monster on the ball. He can do it all. He can he can shoot from distance. He can pass. He can cross. He can take free kicks. All what you want in a creative midfielder, of course. And then Winnie Reed, Winston Reed. West Ham fans are probably going to be a bit upset that I bought him from them. Medium high work rates, perfect. Six foot three, tall enough. Injury prone trait. I didn't know that about him. That's probably a little bit of an issue, but. Again, physically, he's got it all, the pace, the strength, the jump and the aggression. He looks like a fantastic centre-back. And it's time to test these three new signings in the game against Swansea at the Liberty Stadium. Second and final game of today's episode. Hopefully we can do well. I'm absolutely buzzing to try out this new team. As you can see, we're still joint top with Chelsea. They have a better goal difference, so technically we're second. Swansea not having a great season. They're in a relegation battle a little bit. So hopefully... We can just take the three points, no trouble whatsoever. These three guys, you can gain a bit of confidence. 22 million for Shakiri, 18 million for Liverpool. Good prices in my opinion. And uh, what was it, about 11 million for, well, 9 million plus Scott Dan for Winston Reid. It's good business, I'm telling you. Good save by McCarthy, first time he's been called upon action. Oh, it's a goal. They scored from a set piece as well. That is not good. That's not good at all. Andre Ayew, quality player, good delivery from set pieces. I don't know who lost the header there. It's I think it's Musa Sissoko. You should be winning that, mate. He's lost the battle in the air, and it's a goal. We're 1-0 down to Swansea, who shouldn't be this good. Jack Cork opens the score. Suare into Sissoko, who's got a lot of making up to do. Benteke turns. Benteke on his left. It's a good save, Fabianski. Sherdan Shakiri. Towards the edge. Who is it? It's Andros Townsend. Is he the man again to equalise for us? Not this time. Shakiri. Sherdan Shakiri. He's been given a lot of space. Sherdan Shakiri still going. Shakiri off the bar. We're losing one at the half time. Not sure how. Everything that could have gone wrong in that game has gone wrong. We definitely had the better of the first half. There you can see we had more shots, more on target. Possession is even. They scored one of their only chances from a set piece. Nothing much I can do about that. We hit the bar with Shakiri. It's taken a while for us to gel, but I'm confident that in the second half, we're going to be able to overpower them. Sherdan Shakiri. Again, running, trying to do something. Past Leon Britton, he slips through. Christian Benteke, it's 1-0. The new boys linking up beautifully. And Christian Benteke with his first goal in Crystal Palace service. Sherdan Shakiri with his first assist. Lovely work. But look at that, he's just pacing past him, gliding past him. Benteke, brilliant run. It allowed Shakiri to play that pass on his weaker left. Fabianski gets a touch onto it. Not enough. Crystal Palace fight their way back into this one. Musa Sissoko now. In towards Benteke. Benteke slips through. Johan Kabai. And it's 2-1. Johan Kabai gives Crystal Palace the lead. And Benteke this time providing and not scoring. Great work from Shakiri. I may leave it in. How he dodged a slight challenge like that is absolutely beyond me. Kabai, lovely first time finish. The team starts to gel once the new signings get used to each other. There is no stopping them. Good ball in. Oh, McCarthy, what a great save. And he's there for the follow-up as well. In towards Christian Benteke. Shakiri is making that run forward. Jerdan Shakiri is going to get there. Jerdan for his goal on the debut and he scores. He, he deserves it. Jerdan Shakiri, what a debut he has had. Benteke with his second assist. Unbelievable. I can't remember the last time where we scored three goals in one game. If you needed any more proof that lack of goals was our problem before and that the new signings have fixed that problem, 
This is it. Benteke and Shakiri lighting it up up front. Brilliant. 3-1 absolute masterclass second half performance from Palace. There's a man running through. I don't, I'm not sure who it is. It's Sheridan Shakiri again and he scores again. It's his double. Sheridan Shakiri makes it 4-1 in injury time. What a pass from Pape Suare to be fair to him. Look at that. The first touch with the back heel. Unreal. I mean, I'm, I'm actually blown away. I knew these guys would have had a good impact. But this is beyond my expectations. 4-1 away from home. And that's the final whistle. We've demolished Swansea City. We were 1-0 down at half time. And then it clicked. We just needed 45 minutes to get the game going. And after that, we didn't look back. We only, to be fair, created as many chances as in the first game. But this time we put our chances away, which is, of course, very nice to see. It's going to be a tough goal for man of the match. Shakiri or Benteke. I'm not sure who's going to get it. They both contributed to three goals in total. One goal, two assists for Benteke. Two goals, one assist for Shakiri. Did I say that right? You know what I mean. Um, it's so tough. I can't decide. I want to give it to them both. It's not like looking at the stats that it makes it any easier. Dribbles completed. Benteke slightly edges that. But passes completed. Shakiri did a little bit more there. Although Benteke seemed to be a little bit more flawless with his passing. I'm just going to give it to Benteke. No, you know, for the first time ever, I'm going to give man of the match to both players. I just can't pick. It's a really weird one, but for this one, you know what, guys? I'm going to let you guys vote in the top right-hand uh, corner of your screen. There's a little I. I've given man of the match points to both Benteke and Shakiri. The vote options you will have is keep it that way. They both deserve it. Or either Benteke or Shakiri. Whoever you think deserves it, let me know. And the answer that's most popular, I'm going to go with. So one of these two players could potentially lose their man of the match points. Or if you agree with me that they deserve it both, then just vote for that option and we'll see what happens. The title race is incredibly tough. Chelsea keep on winning as well. They're not giving up. And even though we put four, four past uh, Swansea, they still seem to have the better goal difference. Oh no, we're actually level on goal difference. It's based on goals scored that they're currently first, or games that they've won, I'm not sure, but it's tense, it's absolutely tense. Let's take a look at the games we've got in store for the next episode. We're going back to the three games in episode, of course. Tottenham at home, tough, tough game. Round of 16 in the FA Cup, I may play that, I'm, I'm not sure. Watford at home, I will probably play as well. I can't afford to sim games, and if I sim a game, it's either going to be Newcastle or Watford, and then play Bournemouth. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, we'll see what happens. I hope you enjoyed, I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all later.